All right, welcome back everybody. This is Eric from Moss Pawn and Gun. And today we have another how-to episode for you. We've been getting a lot of requests uh, for me to do a video on a Mosin trigger job. So here you go. I'm gonna show you a really easy, uh, non-obtrusive way to get a good, decent break on your Mosin trigger without a whole lot of work, a whole lot of effort. Um, I am going to explain this in long form, so bear with me. Hopefully you guys will learn something. Uh, the Mosin trigger, as it comes from the factory, I mean, they kind of vary across the board. I've seen them come, uh, you know, from surplus being very good. Other times I've seen them, you know, in the 12 to 15 pound range with a lot of creep, a lot of take up, a lot of slack, a lot of over travel. I mean, they're not target guns. That's one thing to remember. Uh, they are very decent guns. They're fun shooters, but they were never intended to be a target rifle. I mean, they are meant to sling lead and that's it. So let's look at this trigger a little bit. There's a couple of things that I want you to notice about how this action kind of operates as the rifle's being dry fired. Obviously you have a striker piece that has your sear engagement. In a moment you'll see the actual sear and as it uh, you know intercepts the cocking piece. You notice when you squeeze the trigger that the cocking piece itself, hopefully in the camera angle you can see, that the cocking piece actually moves a little bit. All right, that's because the way the angle on that cocking piece is cut in relation to the sear is actually at an angle. So, you know, traditionally a good trigger job, it should be 90 degree angle, flat surfaces that ride smoothly against each other. You'll notice when I squeeze this trigger that the cocking piece actually pulls down. I mean, any of you have been asking that question why that occurs, and that's because the length of pull on the trigger the sear has to drop so much further against the cocking piece in order for it to, to fall. You'll see that in just a second. All right, the break is not bad, but you can see that there's a considerable take up. The trigger has a lot of slack in it. Um, most of the Russian rifles do not have trigger return springs, which we may add one. That's one thing you can do to just kind of make the overall quality of the trigger a little better. In a future video, I will be discussing advanced uh, Mosin trigger jobs you can do yourself. This is going to be a real quick and easy one because it's only going to involve shortening the length that that um, trigger has to travel in order to get the sear to drop below the striker. All right, that's not bad. But see, we do have a considerable take up and there's a lot of grit in the trigger that's caused from the way that sear actually rubs against the cocking piece. So in order to accomplish this task, we're gonna to have to take the gun completely apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now while I'm working here. All right, you won't need the stock anymore. You're just gonna set that off to the side. You'll come back to it later. You don't have to remove the interrupter. You can leave that in place. All you're concerned with is the striker. All right, so once you've disassembled the bolt and you've removed the trigger components uh, from the rifle, I'm basically just gonna give you a quick illustration of how all these parts interline with each other. The sear itself is a leaf spring. This is a spring steel, so it's got a bit of springiness to it, and of course it's got a curvature to it uh, that helps keep tension against the cocking piece. The cocking piece rides against this surface of course, it's not that far when it's in the gun, but this is just for demonstration purposes. This is the actual geometry we're, we're looking at. We want these two angles to be straight, 
and we want to reduce them to where this trigger does not have to move the sear down as far to set the gun off. Now you're still going to have a lot of take up, you're going to have some over travel. You're not going to be able to get around that unless you do some of the other things we're going to do in the future videos. I'll show you how to add an over travel adjustment screw. I'll tell you, I'll show you how to add a uh, set screw to adjust for the actual sear engagement. We'll do all that later. This is just a basic, easy, cheesy trigger job. This screw holds the leaf sear, the, sp the leaf spring that also doubles as a sear in place to the action right here. And the pin pivots, or I'm sorry, the trigger pivots on this roll pin. Actually, it's not a roll pin, it's just a hardened steel pin. So, um, pretty simple. Obviously, one of the first areas you can look at if you're doing a trigger job is we're going to scuff this down on the wheel just a little bit and we're going to polish it to a high luster. All right. We're also going to take a Sharpie and we're going to paint the surfaces that we're removing metal from and we're going to see what the engagement looks like and where the wear patterns are and that's going to tell us how much we can take away. All right. So now that I've demonstrated what those parts do, let's go ahead and uh, move on to um, actually adjusting that out. All right, one thing I want you to notice about this trigger, as is, without even putting the bolt in, is the fact that, you know, you are going to have some over travel to contend with. You notice the way this trigger operates. As you squeeze it to the rear, all it does is pull down on this leaf spring that doubles as your sear surface. So we're going to put the bolt in. Part of doing a trigger job is understanding how everything works. I mean, this is a simple mechanism, but you still need to understand what's going on. When the trigger's squeezed, of course, it pulls down. You notice the, the leaf spring flexing. All right. I'm going to show you one more angle from the back. All right, you can see the, uh, the cocking piece move quite a bit as I squeeze the trigger. So we're going to pull it apart and see where those wear patterns have developed against our Sharpie marks. All right, what we see, what we have to go off of is not much. There's not really any engagement that is occurring um, against these surfaces like we would think. Um, you know, unless it just didn't rub that much of a wear pattern. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit off the top of the sear. I'm going to show you uh, the reason that this trigger job is such an easy one to do is that if you mess up, I'm going to show you a way that you can actually correct the problem very easily. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take a little bit off the uh, top of the sear and uh, polish on our trigger a little bit. One thing that you don't want to do, you don't want to round this surface off across the back because the whole point of this trigger job is you want those edges to be a 90 degree angle of one another. You want them to break very cleanly. All I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this same angle, you notice that distinct angle, and I'm just going to shorten it, make it a little bit shorter, and I'm going to run the edges of the sear along the belt sander 
just to kind of clean them up so that when I go on the buffing wheel, it's going to polish up real nice. All right, that's shortened a bit. What we're also going to do is I'm just going to barely touch the, the engagement surface on the belt sander just enough to get it in the white so that when we put it on the buffing wheel, it's going to polish it up real nice. Just a baby's touch. All right, you notice that we just took it across the top to bring that surface down a little bit more. And you don't really have to polish the edges, but I like to bring that out to a high luster, which you'll see in a moment. And I just brightened up the front barely, just enough to make that whole engagement a little bit cleaner. All right, once I polish this up and we reassemble, we're gonna get a little bit better idea of where those surfaces are actually touching once everything's up to a high polish. All we're gonna do with this is touch it on the belt sander on the top of the trigger just to smoothen this out. It's gonna make it a little bit cleaner. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All that's meant to do is just to help it brighten up on the wheel a little easier. It's not really supposed to look pretty, it's just to make it where it'll polish real nice. Same thing on the cocking piece. All we're gonna do is just barely touch some of these surfaces on the sander just so it uh, kind of agitates the surface of the metal, makes it take on the buffing wheel a lot better. Alright, one reason that the cocking piece moves a lot when you squeeze the trigger is because this is not a 90 degree angle. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, make this a 90 degree angle. Not going to take a whole lot off, it's not going to take much, uh, but we're going to go ahead and accomplish that, get that to a nice uh, clean angle there. All right, that's just to get things started. I'm gonna finish up with a diamond file. All right, well I've assembled our bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and put the sear and the trigger back in. Now, uh, we're probably gonna to have to grind a little bit more on the sear, but I went ahead and uh, hit it again with some more uh, black magic marker, and that's gonna let us see exactly what that striker's doing, okay? So let me uh, just get this back in real quick here. And we'll try it again, see how much uh, an improvement that we got. Sometimes you get it right on the first try. Other times you have to take this damn thing apart about 10 times to get it the way you want it. It's just the nature of trigger jobs. I mean, be prepared to uh, disassemble the gun several times to get the desired result. Each time you do it, make sure that this screw is pretty dang tight because that, that's a pretty crucial part. All right. What we're looking for is remember before how our striker was moving a lot, we want to make sure it's not moving. So we're going to start to squeeze it. Oh man, that is so much better already. And uh, we haven't polished anything up yet. Just, you know, that's a big improvement. Just in those engagement surfaces being a perfect 90 degree angle, uh, we're going to squeeze the trigger and you should see very little to no movement in the cocking piece. See, it lifts up just a little bit, but it's got a nice clean break. And hopefully with the sear, having our black magic marker on it, we should know exactly how much engagement we're getting. So we know how much potential engagement that we can take off. I mean, it's right now, I would say, you know, even in my experience without any kind of gauge, that's probably about a six and a half pound trigger. 
And you know, for being no polish work or nothing like that, it's definitely not bad, but we are gonna get it lighter. So uh, let's go ahead and get this thing back apart and we're gonna see where our wear marks are. So by a little bit of our initial uh, look at the wear pattern on the sear, we took it down just a little bit more. The main thing to remember with uh, doing this type of work is you can take it away a lot easier than you can put it back. So don't be in a hurry to take metal off. You know, always reassemble and double check because the, the minute you don't do that, you know, it's, it's really going to come back to bite you if you take too much metal off which I'm gonna show you before the video's out. I'm gonna show you an easy way to correct that. Let's have a look at this now. That's pretty freaking good. That's about a four pound trigger. Um, of course, it doesn't have that nice, pretty two-stage uh, like a K31 does, but the brake is clean. It's noticeable with a set screw for the over-travel and a set screw for the adjustment of the uh, sear engagement. You can really get an adjustable trigger out of this thing without too much difficulty. That's a very nice trigger. We're going to call it that. I don't really want to go any lighter than that, although I could. A good test is uh, once you assemble the gun, you want to bang the stock down. Um, of course, with the gun empty and the uh, striker to the rear, bang the stock on the floor. And if, if it dry fires itself, then you've probably gone too light. All right, I'm going to show you how to correct that problem. But that's a pretty dang good trigger right there, okay? And it didn't require a lot of work and a, a lot of effort. Now, if you do go too light on the trigger, I'm going to show you how to correct that because many of you will, don't panic. All right, if you go too light, this point right here is your stop. This is what rides against the base of the receiver to basically your over travel. All right, if you've gone too light and you don't have enough engagement and you're banging the, um, the butt stock on the floor and it's dry firing, then you need to take this down just run that on the belt sander or run it down with a file until you get a safe amount of sear engagement. The main thing is you don't want this thing dropping out of a deer stand and shooting you in the ass, all right? So let's go ahead and move on to uh, polish up all of these parts that we got in the white here. And uh, we'll reassemble, put it back in the rifle, and check it out. That's very nice. I mean, it's, it's got a... It's got a noticeable take up in the, in the uh, trigger in terms of the slack, but with a little practice, you could really get used to where that trigger breaks. It's much better, okay? I know it's hard to see over a film, of course, but, but trust me, uh, Chad's gonna do it in a second. He'll see what I mean. I mean, honestly, the break on that trigger reminds me a lot other than the fact that it's not a true two-stage, but remember, in a future video, I will show you how to do a two-stage trigger on this thing, on your own, do it yourself. And uh, despite the fact that it doesn't have a noticeable you know, two-stage, once you're used to where that break is, you could definitely do some accurate shooting with this trigger. All right, so people, I really hope that this video assisted you. Uh, for some of you guys that have been asking the question, there's your answer. I know it was a little long, but I appreciate you watching. If you made it all the way through the video, thank you very much. You guys have a good day. And uh, if you decide that you want this done, if you, if you don't feel like you wanna do it yourself, I'll do the trigger job that I just performed here for $35. Bring your gun by and I'll do it for 35 bucks. These videos are filmed for entertainment purposes only and I can't be held liable for anything you do to your gun. If you have any questions, you feel free to ask us or come by the shop. Appreciate you watching.